Alright everyone, here's just a quick video about um, hunting rifles. Uh, this is designed to be a video for beginners and um, particularly people who will be starting out in state forest hunting. Um, chances are that if you've done any shooting before, a lot of this um, information will be pretty rudimentary, but some people need it and that's why I'm presenting it. I think the main thing I want to get across in this video is not just um, about the rifle that I've chosen, but the reasons I've chosen it and um, what kind of features that you want to be looking for in a rifle as opposed to just brand names and um, all that advertising stuff. So one thing I should have elaborated on is this is a video about centerfire rifles in particular, hunting for medium and large game that we have in New South Wales. Well here it is. This is a Remington 700 SPS in stainless steel. It's in 7mm 08 cartridge and it's topped with a Bushnell 3 to 9 by 40 scope. So the first feature I'll discuss is the fact that it's a stainless steel synthetic stock rifle. Now that was my first requirement when buying one of these because I intended for this tool to see a lot of weather. Um, for one, like if I want to be hunting in the rain, I don't want to be worrying about my tool if I want to hunt in adverse weather conditions, camp with it overnight, strap it onto the back of my pack even if it's a wet day, that kind of thing. The stock side of things, look, wooden stocks, wooden furniture is sexy as, but um, unfortunately, if they take on moisture, there's a chance that they could warp and I don't want that to affect the accuracy of my firearm. Also, I respect wood. I love wood and I don't want to see it get scratched. And um, synthetic stocks like this are much harder to scratch. The other thing I'll point out is synthetic stocks are a lot lighter and I do want to see if I can reduce the weight of my everyday hunting rifle. Another thing to consider is um, the action of firearm you buy. Now, bolt actions are by far the most common hunting rifle that we have out in the market in Australia, and look at most of the world to be honest, and it's because they're versatile, and obviously we're building an all-rounder platform, we want it to be a versatile rifle. That's not to say that pumps or lever actions are inadequate, no, and there's many reasons to take one out um, state forest hunting. I'm just thinking that if you own one rifle, um, and it has to be an all-rounder and tick every box, I think you should prefer it to be a bolt action. But they have certain advantages that, um, you know, it's very easy to uh, you know, pop a magazine out tube fed lever actions for example can't do that you might have to cycle the action to um to completely unload the rifle for me that's an issue um, bolt actions are a very accurate well tested and well honed um, mechanism um, so it, it, it might be slightly slower in its rate of fire I don't think that's a big issue if you practice with your firearm that should that should cover cover that and um, and what's more like one thing for the lever actions I've owned a lever, lever action marlin before and shooting it prone was difficult um, where I think that the bolt action is far more suited um, for whether you're shooting prone or upright, um, propped up against a tree, anything like that. My thoughts on that. Alright, again, if you wanted to get in depth about sto scopes, you could go on all day. Um, there's so much information, and, and to be honest, I don't, I don't have much of that. But if you're a beginner and you're not sure what to get, a 3 to 5 by 40 is an extremely common scope that's on the market. Every scope maker will make something like that. Um, and 3 to 9 by 40 as well, like there's affordable ones, I mean you can get a decent scope, like I got this for just over $200, um, it's certainly not bottom end of the market, I mean it's not the most expensive either, but it does the job really um, effectively. The 3 to 9 refers to the fact that it um, can go from 3 times zoom all the way up to 9 times zoom, and um, that's really important whether you're shooting at close range or you're shooting at a bit of a distance across a paddock or something like that, to have the versatility is essential. Alright, uh, let's talk about calibre. And um, it's probably one of the most common, commonly asked questions um, for new buyers of rifles and new to the sport is which caliber to choose. And, um, you know, it's an exhausting question. There are so many different ones to choose from and there's so many different benefits to, to so many of them. I think that's the first thing that gets stuck in people's minds is they think that by choosing, um, by choosing one round or one caliber type, that they're somehow missing out on the benefits of another. And I guess that's what leads people to develop you know, large arsenals of rifles, um, which is fine, which is awesome actually, if you can afford it. I know I can't, I know a lot of others are in the same position too. And what's more to the point is, you can't carry more than one rifle with you, really, um, when you're hunting. And if you are, that's, I think that's cumbersome, I don't think that's a smart choice to make. So you need one rifle and one caliber choice that's going to cover a lot of choices. I can't go on about every different caliber, but what I probably can do is just recommend some basic ones and common ones and explain why they're, why they're a good choice. I think some of the most common rounds that I see used um, by hunters in this day and age in state forests in particular is uh, 243, 308 and uh, 270. Um, 
there are other ones of course too, and there's people thinking, oh, I use that 3006 and I use 300 wind magnet, sure, sure, sure. Let's just stick down to some basics for beginners. 243, 308. Um, they have the same amount of powder behind them, the same, uh, the same case behind them. 243 is obviously a thinner round than the 308. Um, the thinner round, the less um, pill and lead is going to be entering the animal, but um, the flatter the trajectory is going to be. Um, so that's something to consider. I, I chose a round, uh, the 7mm 08, which is basically bank smacking between 243 and 308. I keep bringing up those twos because they are so common and they're so readily available and there's so much information about them so that um, that's a good way to funnel and channel your research your, um, and your growing knowledge about shooting. 7mm 08, the reason I chose it is because it's still a thinner, um, thinner round than the 308, yeah, it does keep pretty good velocity and much flatter shooting, but because it's got a heavier pill than a 243, um, it's more ideal for me when it comes to shooting larger game as well. So I use a 140 grain 7mm 08. Um, that's my choice, and that works for me from everything from um, obliterating small game to sambity. Um, this has shot many sambity. It's shot five out of the seven sambity that I've killed, and um, and that's a pretty handy cartridge. Uh, 270 is the other one I bring up because um, that's a, a longer cartridge, it's got more power behind it and has a lot more length and range. Um, it's also a very flat shooter as well. The reason I like flat shooters is because I don't want to be thinking about that um, when it comes down to lining up a shot. I don't want to be like taking 30 seconds to readjust and things because animals run away. Um, the realities of shooting in the field and mucking around like that, um, especially in forest environments, um, I just don't think you have that time. So that's why I like flat shooters, they don't have to fill around with the... Um, the turrets and the, on the scopes too much. My recommendation would be 7mm 08. If you want to buy your first hunting rifle and you want it to cover everything, I would recommend this one. If you get 243 or 308, though, you're going to do well as well. Only reason to steer away from 243 is that if you're interested in getting into Sambadir um, and hunting Victoria, which, look, if you're keen on hunting, you, you will and you ought to. I highly recommend it. Uh, 243 is not a legal round in Victoria when it comes to shooting Samba or Red Deer. Um, just a, a myth that needs to be debunked because I hear it mentioned all the time. New South Wales does not have minimum caliber restrictions. It does not have minimum caliber restrictions. It does have a sheet of recommendations and that's a very ideal thing to follow, but they are not legally binding. It is your choice, it is up to your discrimination to decide um, whether you're using the right tool for the choice. So for example, if you're trying to shoot deer with a 22 rimfire, um, well you're a dickhead for one and it probably fits into the realm of animal cruelty. You still take responsibility for your choice of round um, and there can be ramifications for that but it is not legally binding which calibre you choose in New South Wales. Awesome. Well that was a lot of talking but I really hope um, that some of the new got players to the game have found that a bit helpful. Um, all I'd say as well is that like, time at the range practice does make perfect um and i encourage that big time also really hope that um marsh has been productive the first two weeks of deer season are now up and i've been hearing lots of reports of plenty of fallow dropping in the state forest and also a few reds which is fantastic hope many more bite the dust um yeah good time with the natural guys till next time mm -hmm.